Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood, and uh, we want to talk about the current status of what is going on with uh, Iran. So um, let's go to the wide shot so we can see that graphic. Is, aren't, isn't that cool? Look at the way it moves <laughs> like that. Um, so I want to show everybody. So as it stands today, this is Tuesday, January 9th. We have killed Soleimani. They retaliated um, with airstrikes that seem like they they were designed to just say, hey, we retaliated, but we didn't really want to hurt anybody because they knew that if they were to kill Americans, then that's because America has this very arrogant view that our lives are more important than anybody else's. So if you kill an American, well, then we got to bomb your whole country. Um, and then Trump said, what, we're standing down and there's this sort of frail piece he's talking about. Meanwhile, 3,500 new troops are being deployed like as we speak. Uh, and two new resolutions. So uh, Bernie Sanders in the Senate and the Congress introduced this resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, with Ro Khanna. With Ro Khanna. Mm -hmm. So they did that this morning, basically, saying, and Fee, what exactly is it called? Or what was the, what do they call it? They call it the... Well, so Congress just passed a war powers resolution to uh, prevent Donald Trump from waging war against Iran without congressional approval. Then Bernie Sanders and Ro Khanna were doing something separate where it was a resolution to just prevent that in general, mm -hmm. to prevent any president from waging war against a, a, a country without congressional approval. So that's that that was their that was the that was their um initial attempt however it has to go through the senate so it is a lot of kind of like posturing in a way because we know that the senate is republican and it's not um it's probably not likely going to pass but it was introduced by bernie sanders and ro Khanna. well let's talk about let's talk about the republican senate real quick because mm -hmm. there's a senator mike lee um who came out and said um, this. I want to put this on the screen about the uh, the security briefing. The briefing lasted only 75 minutes, whereupon our briefers left. This, however, is not the biggest problem I have with the briefing, which I would add was probably the worst briefing I've seen, at least on a military issue, in the nine years I've served in the United States Senate. What I found so distressing about that briefing was that one of the messages we received from the briefers was, do not debate, do not discuss the issue of the appropriateness of further military intervention against Iran. And that if you do, you'll be emboldening Iran. I find this insulting and demeaning, not, not personally, but to the office that each of the 100 senators in this building happens to hold. It is not acceptable for officials within the executive branch of government, I don't care whether they're with the CIA, with the Department of Defense or, or otherwise, to come in and tell us that we can't debate and discuss the appropriateness of military intervention against Iran. It's un-American, it's unconstitutional, and it's wrong. Every time they pull a stunt like this, I'm willing to consider and introduce any and every War Powers Act resolution. Garrett Hake, that was uh, Mike. And look, when it comes to constitutional questions between the legislative and the executive, Mike Lee is a partisan for that, if for his point of view on the constitution. <laughs> He's uh, it's a new leaf for that guy. So, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you think of that? First of all, and where we're at with this, I'm obviously. It should be noted. We haven't asked Congress to go to war, getting congressional approval for war since World War II. So, right. While this is scary, this like the last couple of days are like, are we going to go World War Three? Are Russia and China going to jump in? I mean, this we, we're on the brink of a really horrible situation. If what comes out of this is everybody going, hey, <laughs> we've been given presidents in both parties for decades way too much power mm -hmm. and we're going to curtail that. I, if that's what comes out of this, then I guess it's a good thing. But what do you, Ron, first of all, what's your reaction to this? Well, you know, uh, I'm going to go out on a crazy limb here and say that uh, a Republican from Utah and I probably don't have a lot in common. Whoa! And, <laughs> don't make I beg this, to differ. Wow, I bet, I bet don't we make have this a, so political, Ron. I bet we don't have much in common. And, 
I don't know. I, I'd like to be uh, a little more optimistic here, but but I kind of have a feeling this was just sort of soundbite theater. Do we really believe that uh, this dude entertains some fantasy that the military industrial complex doesn't pull all the puppet strings uh, of him and, and everybody like him? Do, do, do we really think he thinks that? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think that was just grandstanding theater because they want us to believe um, you know, that they actually want to make decisions, that we actually have a say in these decisions. Uh, we don't. It's the military-industrial complex. They're pulling the sp- strings. Presidents will come and go. And let's keep in mind, that's why they didn't like Trump in the first place. They did not like Trump because they didn't think he was a willing participant, just like George W. was, just like Barack Obama was, just like people before that were. They didn't like him because they were like, this guy's an idiot who's going to say something stupid and spill the beans on something. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a nice soundbite, but I, I'd be surprised if it was any more than that. Fiorella? I think there are actual people, maybe not necessarily all of them in the Republican Party, but there are a good amount, though, that are against war. We've seen Tucker Carlson speak out against uh, war, which is which is I mean, he's he's right on that. I don't like I the guy, but it's like, <laughs> damn, I have to say now that I you know that he has he is right on that. Um, however, I agree you with think Ron. There's a lot, though? But I, I, I think there is more than than what we think. And I think that hmm. people are pushing that climate there, because if you look at someone like Tulsi Gabbard, she is whipping up a lot of Republican and um, independent votes of people who may not be fond of the Democratic Party. But they're like, hey, Donald Trump wasn't the anti-interventionist I thought he would be. I thought he said he was going to run as as a guy that was going to drain the swamp, get rid of these people. But all he has done is fallen in line to people like Pompeo in the military industrial complex. But I agree with Ron that somebody who is a politician very well knows that the people who are controlling and driving this aren't necessarily Trump, but the people around him like Pompeo, the military industrial complex who benefit on both sides of the party from war. And if they can get you know, people to hate on Trump and make him look like he's just another puppet, it just serves her benefit. So I think there's multiple layers going on here. I mean, I think the public and, and, and is pushing for an anti-war kind of agenda, but I also think these people are also kind of using Donald Trump once again as a scapegoat to say, oh, we are better than him. Look at this president. Look at what he's doing. So, Well, that's a great question. So that asked me, brings up to this of, of, of so Congress and now this Bernie, um, which is sort of with Congress and the Senate, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Of, of limiting the Presidential War Powers Act. I, I wanna have faith in that too, but I, I have a similar level of skepticism that you have, Ron, because this democratically controlled Congress just voted to increase Trump's war budget. Right. He has been given $132 billion more than Obama, and Obama had an offensive military budget. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the same democratically controlled Congress that just voted to extend the goddamn Patriot Act. Mm-hmm. They voted to give Trump his pay, his his border wall. Oh, they, they gave him a new NAFTA. I mean, they uh, they, they gave him a wonderful holiday season. Yeah. yeah. Really? Well, they were impeaching him. They gave him a lot of gifts. Yeah. So is this this limiting and and people actually paying attention? Like, again, it is great soundbite theater. Mm -hmm. I do appreciate uh, this, Mike Lee. And then Bernie reiterated what he said, because I guess Bernie was in the same meeting, obviously, because he's a senator saying... Mm. We're not allowed to debate this. What what is the point of having a democracy if we can't debate things? We're supposed to be right. That's what a democracy is. We get to debate. There isn't just one leader, a dictator who just waves their scepter and we all fall in line. Although although Sarah Sanders today on Fox News basically implied <laughs> there should be. I mean, I mean, I think that's what I think. I think what we're all getting at, and I think this is uh, one kind of like you know bright light amidst the dark clouds, is mm-hmm. that. It's so out in the open now yeah. that it's yeah. like, hey, we're an empire. We're the bad guys. You have a problem with that? Piss off. And finally, people are like, whoa, this is messed up. The fact that Sarah Huckabee Sanders is basically saying, why should anyone discuss this? Just let the president do what he wants. And the military industrial complex will dictate him. And uh, it's good that this terrorist is burning in hell. And now people are waking up and they'll be like, you know, it's... Uh, it's kind of messed up that anybody from uh, another country who does something our government decides they don't like, we just 
call them a terrorist and illegally assassinate that's them. A that's going to yeah. mess up. Yeah, yeah, we shouldn't do that. If, if somebody did that to us, we'd be pretty upset. Um, yeah, maybe our priorities are a little backwards here. Maybe we're not the good guy. I think more people are realizing yeah, that. Yeah, they are. But that's we, the one silver lining. I think that yeah. we can trust our media because here's what they said about Sol three years ago. <laughs> Soleimani three years ago. <laughs> Iranian General Qasem Soleimani, the leader of Iran's elite special operations Quds Force. When Iraqi troops pushed back Islamic State militants in the key town of Jerf al sakr late last month, Iranian state media and Iraqi news websites suggested Soleimani masterminded the victory. As military advisor, Soleimani is also credited with leading Shia militias and Iraqi troops in key wins against Islamic State forces, advancing on villages surrounding the capital Baghdad. The Islamic State terrorists sought to surround Baghdad, but they failed in reaching their ominous goals thanks to Iran's support, said senior Iranian military official Esmail Ghani on Sunday. Huh. Well, so now... Six years later, this guy will be the public enemy I mean, number the most two. most evil guy in the world. You've <laughs> never heard of him, but oh, trust played. us, he was up to some shady shit. Yeah, uh, um... It's, it's, yeah, and all of a sudden now he becomes number one bad guy right. that, that we need to, that we need to get. So, yeah, and, and you, you heard about that all the time on the campaign trail. I mean, don't you remember in, in the debates <laughs> even, Hillary and Trump were talking about him for a good hour. Remember that part? I, oh, wait, that never happened? No. Oh, wait a minute. Well, wait, no, no, Hillary's had some good things. She's, she's had some good things. Oh, yeah, oh. she's got a track record on Iran. She's got a great track Hillary record. Hillary would have been so much better. Than Donald Trump, oh wouldn't she? Oh my gosh, she wouldn't. We wouldn't be at war at all. At Hillary, all. here's her as a Guys, senator. Guys, look, I am glad that we are on the brink of World War III, and a lot of people are doing their part by reminding everybody of who they voted for almost Hashtag four years ago. I voted they're, they're, for Hillary. They're Clinton. saving the world. <laughs> oh, you voted for Hillary. Okay, so here's her as a senator. Our democracy, with its tradition of accountable power and open debate, is America at its best. And that's what we need, America at our best, as we deliberately and resolutely confront the threat posed by the Iranian regime. Now make no mistake, Iran poses a threat to our allies and our interests in the region and beyond, including the United States. The Iranian president has held a Does conference really need to look denying at her card for that one. She, she didn't know which she including like, Oh yeah, that's us. Yeah. Sorry, uh, we were a military United industrial States, complex. That's oh. us. Yeah. And uh, we're in the region? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, wait a minute. We have as many military bases in the region as all the like 10 countries combined. They are a threat and by they I mean Iran <laughs> and they are a threat to uh the United States. <laughs> and united, we bad. stand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it gets, uh, there's more. Is it possible for her to be likable ever? No. Ever. Like, like everything she says, you're just like, ah. It's so, no. this is 2007. Holocaust and has issued bellicose statement after bellicose statement calling for Israel and the United States to be wiped off the map. His statements are even more disturbing and urgent when viewed in the context of the regime's quest to acquire nuclear weapons. The regime also uses its influence and resources in the region to support terrorist elements that attack Israel. Hezbollah's attack on Israel this summer using Iranian weapons clearly demonstrates Iran's malevolent influence, even beyond its borders. We also have evidence, although it is by no means conclusive, of attack. That doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you need conclusive evidence? We didn't need conclusive evidence for Syria. She really missed her calling to be an MSNBC stenographer. That's she could have <laughs> nailed it. She did a great that. job reading that war-approved press release. That's really great. She really nailed it. It shouldn't have been Chelsea. It should have been her. Oh, well, she... Didn't Chelsea have, like, a news thing for a day, right? Yeah. It's like, what? Yeah. She, she, okay. Yeah. So this is in 2007, so she's... Uh, she's evolved. She's evolved. <laughs> she's getting ready to run for president. Um, and then, but of course, when she lost as president, she became secretary of state and helped Obama take us from two wars to seven. Mm -hmm. 
And then 20 countries donated to the Clinton Foundation. And when she became Secretary of State, all 20 countries, total coincidence, all got defense contracts. <laughs> total coincidence. There's more. This is fantastic. I love it. Using Iranian supplied or manufactured weaponry against our own American soldiers. As I have long said and will continue to say, U.S. policy must be clear and unequivocal. We cannot... We should not, we must not, permit Iran to build or acquire nuclear weapons. And in dealing with this threat, as I have also said for a long time, no option can be taken off the table. But America must proceed deliberately and wisely. And we must proceed as a unified nation. The smartest and strongest policy will be one forged through the institutions of our democracy. That is the genius of our American system and our constitutional duty. We have witnessed these past six years until the most recent election of a new Congress by the American people, the cost of congressional dereliction of its oversight duty a vital role entrusted to Congress by our constituents and enshrined in and even required by our Constitution. So we are here today because the price that has been paid in blood and treasure through the rush to war in Iraq and the incompetence of its execution and managing the aftermath in the excesses of military contracting abuses and the inadequate supply of body armor and armored vehicles on the ground have led to a loss of confidence among our allies and the American people in this administration. Therefore, Mr. President, we cannot and we must not allow recent history to repeat itself. We continue to experience the consequences of unchecked presidential action. Sunlight is the best disinfectant, but this president was allowed for too long to commit blunder after blunder under cover of darkness. Let's be real clear. Blunder means war's not a bad idea, just how you did just it. Just how you right. do it. That's, yeah. that's the same thing that they're saying, the Democrats are now saying about Trump. Blunder pulling us out of Syria and then going back in. Right. Blunder in killing Soleimani. Blunder. Not bad that you kill the guy or put us on the brink of World War III. Just not warring enough. And this is all under the guise of Bush got us into these two ridiculous wars. One of them, she voted for them, mm -hmm. right? This is how, one of the reasons she lost in 08. You see all these debates. They kept bringing up Iraq. Yeah. Yeah, and they kept bringing up her flip-flop on health care. Yes. From the 90s. And I love how she has a heart pin on for this whole thing. She's like, I am saying this with love. The guy who is currently bombing the shit out of brown people, not doing it right. I will get it right. Trust my heart. She focuses a lot on the cost of war monetarily, and she flat mm -hmm. out says it. I thought she was going to mention something about the cost of lives. No. Nah. No. It doesn't matter. And then That's... Iran can't have any nuclear weapons. We, they cannot. But we can. Right? Well, you well, hold on now. Hold on. You remember when Iran bombed Hiroshima? Oh, shit. That was us. Oh, God. I got that wrong. I got that wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Long sorry. Graham. I'm sorry. But they bombed Namas Nagasaki. Oh, no. We did both of those cities. I, I'm sorry. I keep getting this screwed up. I'm noticing a trend. There's a lot of... Because there's only one country that's ever detonated a nuclear weapon. And yep. it's the good old US of A. And the other thing Mark. that's so funny about this, you just see how... She'll just say, most politicians, whatever needs to be said at that time. So Bush's two wars weren't popular at this point in late 2007. Recruitment numbers were down. Um, recruitment numbers were down. And then here's another weird coincidence. A recession hit and a bunch of people had to join the military because there was no jobs. There's no connection. By the way, there's no connection at all. There's no connection. Um, all this, and why is he not spending? And again, you say, it's only about money. Who cares that we've killed brown people? Who She doesn't care. She's a rich white lady. And what happens when she is secretary of state for Obama? Mm. What does she do? Laughs when Gaddafi gets killed, which opens up uh, uh, trading, open tr slave trading mm. markets. 
you know, usually comedians laugh at their own jokes when it's not that funny. And, and that's kind of like where she was going at. We came, we saw, he died. Yeah. No, no one else finds that. <laughs> yeah. I'll laugh. It's hysterical. Yeah. Like, yeah, no one else finds that funny. You're a no psycho. One, you're a Pass. psycho. Kinda, you're kind of sick in the head. <laughs> you're a psychopath. And yeah. then she stopped being secretary of state because uh, so she was running because it was her turn. Yeah. 